In all honesty, I don't have a good teaser for this week. My thoughts now exclusively consist of my capstone, toasted vanilla shake and espressos, what I'm getting at Sephora's holiday sale, and LaSalle Sports, of course. Hello, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Libby Gilliland. It's freezing outside, and I am not pleased about it. But thankfully, the studio lights are keeping me warm so we can talk about LaSalle Sports before I go into hibernation to watch football and eat Thanksgiving food. You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. We might not have a lot of winter sports to talk about, but we do have quite a few games to talk about coming up in recaps. And later, Joe James is back with another Explorer Report, and we are talking basketball with Aiden from Sports Talk Philadelphia. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline Top 3. Number one, women's basketball head coach Mountain McGilvery announced four explorers that will be joining the team in the 2023 signing class. The team will be welcoming Arise Mactoon from Maryland, Haley Childs from South Carolina, Amber Bullard from Philadelphia, and Nicole Malinis from New York. Number two, LaSalle Athletics placed in the top 20 for graduation success rate among all NCAA Division I schools. Tying for the top spot last year, the program tied for 18th this year, sharing a score of 97 with Davidson, Fordham, and St. Bonaventure. This makes them tied for the top spot among Atlantic 10 schools with nine Explorers teams registering perfect scores of 100. The United States Track and Field and Cross Country Co Coaches Association named five Explorers to their Division I Cross Country All-Region list this week. Ellen Liz Mancini both featured along with Tiango Mbamba, McCallum Rowe, and Ibrahim Kadir. So really great news to hear about uh, women's basketball signing four new players in the 2023 signing class. They have a lot of talent already, but they do have a, a lot of seniors and master students that unfortunately will be leaving. So the fact that they've gotten off to a good start this season and they are now bringing in more reinforcements is just really awesome to see. Yeah, they certainly are upperclassmen heavy this season. Um, like we were saying, Kayla Spurl is back, which mm -hmm. is really exciting. But next year, you're losing a lot of people. So the way that Mountain has come in and managed that recruiting class, being able to recruit four girls is, is really incredible. So hopefully they seem excited about it, and hopefully they add a lot to the team next year. And cross country making headlines as per usual with the NCAA championships coming up in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Four explorers qualified for it, but we have five explorers on the see if I can get this right, United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. So it's great to see so many um, explorers featured there. McCallum Rowe, who's a freshman, is just really great to, you know, see that we have that, that young talent in there as well. And obviously to kind of round up, it's good to see that LaSalle Athletics is still in the top 20 for graduation success rate. Um, you know, score of 97, that's a great score. So to see that we can also be, uh, be successful outside of athletics is really good to see as well. Yeah, I mean, I've said it plenty of times before, being a student athlete is no joke. It's, yeah. it's difficult to get through all of your classes and travel you know, especially for our teams that do travel a lot um, and, and stay on top athletically and academically. So to be at the top of that list is really prestigious for LaSalle. It definitely is. And that's it for the top three. Now let's see who our teams did in this week's recaps. Women's basketball took on Sacred Heart in Connecticut, where they kicked off the game with a 9-0 run over a three-minute stretch to put them up 12-1. Sacred Heart responded with four points of their own, but Fiona Connolly gave the Explorers a 10-point lead right after. With the score of 17-7 near the end of the first quarter, Mia Jacobs put two on the board to end the frame 19-7. The Pioneers started the second half off strong with a 6-0 run, but LaSalle would end the first half ahead 35-21. to 
The Explorers started off the second half strong, extending their lead to 20 points thanks to back-to-back three-pointers from Molly Massantonio and Kayla Sproul. The two sides would trade points throughout the rest of the half, but LaSalle held on to their lead for a 69-40 victory. It was then over to New York to take on Niagara, where a three-pointer from Claire Jacobs started the game off perfectly. The Explorers ran up an early lead, eventually going ahead 11-4 before a Niagara timeout. The first quarter ended the way it started, with Claire Jacobs hitting a three to end the period 26-12. The second quarter saw a 17-0 run from LaSalle to create a 31-point gap, with the scoreline being 49-19. The Purple Eagles were held to just eight points throughout the quarter, ending the first half 54-20. Niagara slowly crept up on the Explorers, ending the third quarter 70-63 to and outshot the Explorers in the final quarter, but LaSalle was still able to keep their offense strong, ending the game with an 83-64 to win. Tom Gola Arena was packed on Saturday night as the Explorers took their home court for the first time at homecoming to face Wagner. LaSalle was looking good after securing a 19-8 lead after the first 10 minutes. Josh Nickelberry and Hassan Drame were early leaders for the team, each scoring five during the early run. They kept the pace of the game fast, which allowed them to score off the fast break and end the half leading 39-26. to Out of half, the Explorers lost their legs and Wagner was able to cut the lead to five. The Explorers quickly bounced back, expanding their lead to 11 in the next four minutes. For the remainder of the game, LaSalle was led by Knuckleberry and Khalil Brantley, who had career-high 22 points. In the end, the Explorers sailed past Wagner 77-69. This was the men's third straight homecoming win. Cross Country braved the cold to participate in the NCAA Mid-Atlantic Regional on Friday, where four explorers qualified for the NCAA Cross Country Championships. For the women, Ellen Liz Mancini finished 7th and 8th respectively to punch their tickets to Oklahoma. Elle secured a new career best time in the 6K, clocking in at 20 minutes and 28.5 seconds. Liz beat her previous time by 3 seconds, finishing at 20 minutes and 30.5 seconds. For the men, Ibrahim Kadir and Tayanga Mbombo finished 6th and ninth respectively to earn their spots at the championships. Kadir finished with the new career best time in the 10K, finishing at 30 minutes and 9.4 seconds. Mbombo also had a new career best time crossing the finish line at 30 minutes and 14.9 seconds. The women's squad finished in ninth place while the men's squad finished in fourth place overall, marking the highest finish for the Explorers since 2009. Swimming and diving had a dual meet against Ryder and Delaware on Friday. On the women's side, six total swimming victories led them to a win over Ryder, 243-50, and a tie against Delaware at 149.5. Tony Rafferty stood out earning the top spot in the 50-yard freestyle and guiding the 200-yard relay team to a win. Gabriella Herberter also earned two spots in gold with a win in the 200-yard freestyle and 200-yard breaststroke. The men also earned a win over Ryder with a 174-122 finish. George Williamson earned a win in the 1,000 freestyle, while Zach Miller took the men's 200 freestyle. Zach Wolbert finished in gold in the 200-yard butterfly and 100-yard butterfly. And Felix Jedbrat also claimed two wins, the men's 50-yard freestyle and 100-yard freestyle. For diving, Phoebe Shea completed a shutout performance with wins in the 3-meter and 1-meter dive. Sam Henninger took the top spot in the 1-meter dive for the men. After a thrilling homecoming win, men's basketball took on Queens in the first round of the Jamaica Classic. The first 16 minutes were back and forth until a three by Deshaun Shepard led to a 6-0 and allowed them to take a 36-28 lead heading into halftime. The second half was kicked off by a 16-8 run. From there, Hassan Drame and Khalil Brantley took over offensively for the Explorers, combining for 27 points. LaSalle forced 24 turnovers with the season-best nine steals. Claiming the round one win 72-60, they will head to Jamaica to work their way through the bracket. Women's basketball made their Tom Gola Arena debut on Tuesday. A back-and-forth first frame left the Explorers down just three points heading into the second quarter. They quickly found themselves down nine, but Mia Jacob made two free throws to gain back momentum for LaSalle and tie the game. The rest of the second quarter was all LaSalle with a 12-6 run from with 
two three-pointers from Charity Shears to give them a six-point lead leading into halftime. Drexel came back swinging with nine made three-pointers, but LaSalle was able to keep up with the Dragons shooting five from 12 from the field and three from four from three-point range. The Explorers led 56 to 51 heading into the final quarter. LaSalle pulled ahead by eight thanks to a timely steal by Shears, and the Dragons responded with a 15-point run in just two minutes, leaving the Explorers tied at 66. Four lead changes in the last four minutes made a dramatic ending to the first Explorers home game. And in the last seconds, Kayla Spurl hit a pull-up jumper in the paint, drawing the foul and giving the Explorers a 77-74 victory. So definitely a lot of basketball to talk about. Obviously such a close and thrilling win for the women over a City Six rival in Drexel. It's just amazing to see that Kayla Sproul still is, is having the kind of season that she had last year where, you know, she's such a really big presence on the court. And it's great to see Mia Jacobs, Charity Shears get in there as well because they're still very new to the team, although I'm sure Mia Jacobs has some guidance from her older sisters. Um, but no, it's just really great to see that the women are having such a great run so far they're three and one and you know they're they're pulling out these really good wins they're just they're hitting a lot of three pointers their defense is really good so and any time that they go down they come back up again so i it's just really amazing to see that the women are doing so well so far yeah absolutely i was very excited that Kayla Spurl came back for her grad year and struggled a little bit in the first two games, but to see her come back, hit the game winner, and draw the foul at the end of the game at home for their first home game, yeah. that's a great way to start. And I know that she has momentum going mm -hmm. into this next Alaska tournament, and she's a clear leader on this team. So I know that she's going to continue to play well just off that last game. And, you know, you have a lot of other contributing factors, the Jacob sisters, um, always play well yeah. and you know you have a lot of upperclassmen leading this team so you got to hope that with all that leadership they'll have a, a good year like they already are and the men's team is also getting off to a pretty good start Khalil Brantley is uh, integrating into the team more which is really exciting to see because he had his freshman year last year he went into the transfer portal but he ended up staying so it's really nice to see that he is kind of finding his footing and really doing well there. Josh Nickelberry is getting to the form that we were hoping that he would be in last season, so it's good to see that everyone is just getting where they need to be. And we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Aiden Tixinski from Sports Talk Philadelphia is here to talk Explorers basketball. The shuttle. You never hit record! I never hit record! I just got an F on my exam. Is that you? Do you sit around bored all day? Do you want to watch television shows where you can look at the people and be like, I can be that. That's me. Well, you should check out LaSalle TV. That Rhyme. We got entertainment news at Backstage Pass. We got regular news at LTV News. We got sports news at Sports Talk and Sports Line. And for those of you who really want some fun stuff, Q&A. Because down at LaSalle TV, we got a full buffet. Thanks, LaSalle TV. Thanks, LaSalle TV. Thanks, LaSalle TV. I still miss my show. Using meth? taught me everything about freedom, only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom, how meth can take control until you find yourself doing whatever meth tells you to do. Before you get there, while you still can, take a stand for yourself. If you feel yourself losing your freedom to meth, Ask for help. Accept the help. It's worth it. You have the power to be truly free and be the person you want to be. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. If you or someone you know is struggling with meth, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential treatment referral. Learn more at samsa.gov slash meth. Welcome back. We 
We are a couple weeks into the basketball season and it's time we sit down and talk about how the season is starting and how we're feeling. We have Aiden from Sports Talk Philadelphia. Thanks for coming in and talking LaSalle Sports with us today. We'll start with you. How are you feeling about, we'll start with the men um, and their team, their additions that they had this year, but the leadership on this team as well. How are we feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling really good about this team. You mentioned the additions. The biggest one that I saw were the Jame brothers, both of them, um, Hassan and I'm sorry, I have his name here, uh, Fasini. Both of them were part of the St. Peter's team last year that mm -hmm. went on that magical uh, Elite Eight run. They are, have been so far great additions. Uh, I believe that they are averaging 13.7 and 12 points per game, which is a great addition to both Cleo Brantley and Josh Nickelberry, who are averaging a lot of numbers. I think that both those four guys have been key pieces so far. And the record shows they're 2-1, and one, and their only loss was to Villanova, and that was a very close game towards the end. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this team. And with the addition of Fran Dunphy, I know that there were some people who – we're questioning a little bit. Obviously, Fran Dunphy is a legend in the Big Five. You know, he is a really big name in Philadelphia basketball, but he is older. He kind of came back into coaching to coach for his alma mater. So how do you think his coaching style and just him as a presence in the team is affecting them and helping them become so successful so early on? Yeah, I will admit I was a bit skeptical about the Fran Dunphy hiring just because of the fact that he's been out of coaching for a while. It didn't seem like that he was interested in getting back until the offer came to him. But he has been great with this team. It seems like the players are really accepting him as a coach. It seems that they're playing so much better this year than they did last year. And that's no offense to Ashley Howard and the job that he did. It just seems like that the players never really clicked. It seemed like that because of COVID as well, there was just so many issues there. And I felt like that a change of coach was important and needed to be done. And, I mean, the fact is, too, that last year there was a lot of – figure out who the key piece was to that team. Mm -hmm. It was sort of like there was always one guy that would play well and then they wouldn't play well in the next game. Mm -hmm. But now it just seems like everyone's playing well yeah. and they've really figured out their role. And that is so important to a mid-major team where you don't really have one superstar to rely on. You have to rely on everyone to win. Yeah, and with basketball in general on this campus, that's what everybody goes to. That's the big team. And it feels like the campus is excited mm -hmm. about how they're playing. I know everybody was excited about Dumpy coming back. and. Like you said, the whole team is, the camaraderie is good. Have you seen the same excitement on campus that we have? I have as well, yeah, 100%. I think that a lot of people are starting to realize that this team is for real, especially after the Villanova game, because last year they got blown out by Villanova. And it looked like that way in the first half. And they made so many adjustments, which goes back to coaching. When you have an experienced coach that knows how to bring players together when you're down, that is a huge factor. And that's going to be so important going into league play. And then moving on to the women, because they've also been very successful. They're three and one right now. We have a new Jacobs sister in there. We have Charity Shears, who we're saying her name a lot. Kayla Spurl is back for a grad year, as is Molly Massantonio. So a lot of names that we're familiar with, but also names that are new and making an impact. Who have been the players for you, Aiden, that you see are really going to be the key pieces this season? Yeah, Charity Shears is a name that is going to be really important because when it comes to um, the women's basketball team, you need experience. Mm -hmm. and that goes back to the men as well, but this women's team, it was a very inexperienced team the last couple of years. Now you're getting grad players. Now you're having seniors step up. And it's really showing to how this team is playing. And I feel like that's going to be a huge factor as they get into league play as well. Yeah, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but we were talking about the additions that women's basketball just made great recruiting effort but with all of these seniors graduating do you think that next year they'll still be okay i think next year it's definitely going to be a bit of a rebuilding process not to the extent that i think that a lot of people would probably be thinking because you have so many seniors um this year but you also have some juniors as well that are going to step up next year and the fact that they have some freshmen playing now means that you'll still have some newer players but they'll still have some experience for next year which will be great because you can connect as a sophomore with a freshman but you can also then sort of lead them as well which i think is going to be really important and Aiden, as someone who is very well versed in college basketball, I'm, I'm interested to get your perspective on the fact that we haven't seen LaSalle in the NCAA tournament since I think 2013, mm -hmm. made it to the Sweet 16. Where do you see LaSalle's progression going forward and do you think that we could see them back in the tournament anytime soon? I think we can. I think that this year is going to be very telling about how the rest of Dunphy's tenure is going to go. If he's very successful this year, that's something to build off. 
even if he's not, there's still stuff there, at least at this point in the season, where I can say, yes, they can make a run. The thing is, the A-10 is just so competitive yeah. this year. And especially with the addition of Loyola Chicago, who's made so many deep NCAA runs the last couple of years, they're undefeated right now. St. Louis is looking like the team that they thought we all thought they were going to be undefeated. Davidson's also undefeated. And basically every team in the A-10 is over 500 at this point. So it's going to be very competitive once you get into league play. But I am very excited and hopeful for the future. Yeah, certainly a lot to look forward to. But right now, the men are in Jamaica and the women are in Alaska. <laughs> so a lot of traveling for our basketball team. How are you feeling about these two tournaments that they're in right now? I'm very excited for this. I think that there's definitely different factors. As you mentioned, Libby, with the states here, or country as well, with Jamaica, the players just really have to make sure they don't get too distracted with the weather. Obviously, you want to enjoy yourself getting out of the cold weather here in Philly, but I think they could definitely do that. Having Dunphy as your coach is a huge plus for that. And for the women, it's just sort of blocking out a lot of distractions. First of all, you have to travel to Alaska, which is a far travel. You then are going into weather where the high this week is going to be 33, the low is going to be 22. So you have to deal with that. And the final thing you also deal with is a time difference. It's a five hour time difference between Philly and Alaska. So there's a lot of distractions for this team. And the other teams are all either from Alaska or the West Coast. So what you have to really factor in is that this is the farthest team traveling away. So it's just sort of blocking all those out those distractions, not using them as an excuse, but using that to your advantage as well. And I'm really excited to see how both these teams do in these tournaments. Yeah, well, hopefully the women don't freeze too badly. And we're going to take one last break. And when we come back, Joe James is back with another Explore Report, and you don't want to miss it. We also have the upcoming games you can look forward to. So stay tuned. other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. D E P R. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety. I thought so. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at SAMHSA.gov support. I left the military with a traumatic brain injury. I came home to fight depression, anxiety, and alcohol. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I'm Madam Greathouse, Army veteran. DAV helps veterans get the benefits they've earned. With DAV's help, I've built a new life for myself. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories great and small. My victory is just experiencing life. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Welcome back. This week, Joe James has your pre preview for the Jamaica Classic. Check it out. In this week's Explorer Report, Ooh, men's basketball heads to Montego Bay for the Jersey Mike's Jamaica Classic. Game one of the tournament will be held on Friday, November 18th, where they will face Wake Forest at 2 o'clock. The key to this matchup will be a quick start from team leaders Josh Nickelberry and Hassam Drain. Keeping up the team's solid three-point shooting average and help off the bench to lead the Explorers to a win. With a Friday win, the Explorers will play the winner of Loyola Marymount versus Georgetown. That game will be played Sunday, November 20th at 2.30. The other side of the bracket features Queens, Green Bay, Utah Valley, and Morgan State. This will be Coach Dunphy's first international trip with a team and is sure to be a thriller. 
The Explorers have plenty of winter sports to play, and here's what you can look forward to. Men's basketball is in Montego Bay to take on Wake Forest on Friday, November 18th. If they win, they will play either Georgetown or Lo Loyola Marymount on Sunday, November 20th. When they arrive back on campus, they will face Binghamton on November 26th. Finally, they will face Big Five rival Temple at the Palestra on Wednesday, November 30th. The NCAA Cross Country Championships will be held this Saturday in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Four explorers have punched their tickets to the championships and will be competing. Women's basketball will be in Alaska this week at the Great Alaska Shootout. They will face Pepperdine on Friday the 18th, and if they win, they will move on to face the winner of UC Riverside versus Alaska Anchorage. That game will be played Saturday, November 19th. To round out the Explorer sports this week, swimming and diving will compete in the Bucknell Invite from Thursday the 17th through Sunday the 20th. I know that we mentioned it in our discussion with Aiden, but the fact that the men are in Jamaica and the women have to be in Alaska, I don't know how they're doing it, but I'm really excited to see how both of the teams fare in these two different tournaments. I think it will be a, good, a really good indicator for uh, how they play going forward in the season, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they do against their respective opponents. Yeah, it certainly feels a little lopsided to yeah. me, but I can say from experience <laughs> that traveling with a team is so much fun. I mean, mm -hmm. this early in the season, it gets them excited, you know, to go play. You get on a plane. It, it's something different. You're not on campus. And I know being a winter athlete is tough because you don't get to go home. You know, if, if you're an international student or anything, you're playing your sport the whole time. So trips like this and, and bonding with your team really make it all worth it. Yeah, and we definitely will also have some explorers in Oklahoma, which I don't think should be too cold. I don't know what the weather is like in Oklahoma, but it's really exciting because we haven't had multiple explorers at the NCAA championships in a few years. So the fact that we have four, we have two women, two men, feels pretty equal, which is nice. And I have no doubt that they're going to do great. So that's also going to be exciting to keep up with. Yeah, the Mancini sisters have just been killing it the entire year. So it's, it's great to see that they can go compete for LaSalle and... I'm just, I'm so thrilled for them. Yeah, and unfortunately, unlike the Jacob sisters, there's not another Mancini sister that we can add to the LaSalle roster, but that's okay. And that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorers play, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com. Also check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash LaSalle TV and on Instagram at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send your thoughts and suggestions there. For our entire Sportsline team, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Libby Gilliland. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you at the game.